In New Jersey, the state recorded just under 3,400 new cases today and eight new deaths. Hospitalizations have also been on the rise. Despite the increase in cases, state Senate Republicans yesterday sent a letter to Governor Phil Murphy pressing him to end vaccination and testing mandates for some workers. With us to discuss that letter is Republican State Senator Holly Schapese. Senator, first of all, thanks for your time. It's good to talk to you. You as well. You signed on to a letter to Governor Murphy, along with some other Senate Republicans, calling on him to lift vaccine and testing mandates, specifically for health care workers, teachers and corrections officers. Why now, especially when some of the cases are on the rise here in New Jersey? Well, I think it's focused primarily on the mandate that got implemented last month that healthcare workers, as well as those who work in prisons, sheriff's officers, and it goes beyond just medical professionals. It's even admin staff and pretty much anybody who works within these institutions will be terminated if they haven't been boosted. And a couple of recent scientific studies, including one out of Yale and one out of Canada, have indicated that for people who had been previously infected, who had the two shots to begin with, do not get any sort of measurable benefit against Omicron from getting the booster. So if all of these policies are being tailored around science, wouldn't we you know, accept people who have maybe had two shots, had a previous infection as being equal to somebody with a booster if the booster for Omicron is not showing any sort of measurable you know, protection or otherwise? And you point out various studies. We know there's been so much data, and some of these studies, of course, show different findings. So that is an issue. I'm wondering as well if you're also a bit concerned about staffing at these facilities. Well, staffing is a huge issue at a lot of facilities, and we were having issues as a result of even pre-pandemic with certain staffing levels. We always hear about you know, shortages of nurses in our committee hearings, and we have been seeing you know, at our prisons a lot of uh, people who have been worked there taking early retirement, same thing at our sheriff's offices. So I think that we just have to take a much more measured approach and as the science develops, you know, start to rescind certain of these things. I want to switch gears with you just for a moment and turn to the Supreme Court draft opinion. You've said you're pro-choice within reason. What was your reaction to this leaked draft opinion showing the Supreme Court had voted to strike down Roe v. Wade? Well, it was twofold. I mean, one, I'm concerned not about places like New Jersey, but I am concerned about the implications on women in other states, uh, particularly those that may not have the means to travel and to get access. And uh, just for women's health care in general, um, you know, depending upon what policies get pushed forward in other states, could that potentially endanger a woman's life? Uh, there are a lot of considerations that go into why people seek an abortion and why in some cases one's necessary. Uh, I also, as an attorney, had really grave concerns about the leaking of a first draft Supreme Court opinion and the implications on the court moving forward. Governor Murphy said on our air Wednesday that women from all states are welcome to come here to New Jersey for abortion and reproductive services if abortion becomes illegal in their home state. How do you respond to that? We need to understand how far he intends on going with this. I think we need to focus on New Jersey and medical needs of people in New Jersey before we make blanket statements. Senator, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Have a great weekend.